Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green poison deck featuring essentially 16 copies of Venerated Rot Priest. Now of course we only get to play with 4 copies in our main deck. This 1-2 says whenever a creature we control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. So if they try to remove our Rot Priest, the opponent will get 1 poison for each Rot Priest we control. And if we target our own Rot Priests with our various pump effects, they will also trigger. So it's a pretty fast way to poison someone to death but ideally we get more than one copy on the battlefield but of course we can't always consistently draw multiple copies of rot priest which is where our various tutor effects will come in handy we've got 12 total so that's how we get to our total of 16 rot priests including a march of burgeoning life now this is a tutor that only works if we already have a rot priest on the battlefield but the advantage is that it's a lot cheaper since we can even pitch a green spell from our hand to pay for the x so then we only need to tap a single forest to get another rot priest on the battlefield and then we can always uh, cast it for additional mana if we don't want to exile a card from our hand and then we can also potentially apply a poison by targeting our own rot priest with a march so that's also one upside then we have Invasion of Ikoria. This we can cast for X equals 1 to put a Rot Priest straight onto the battlefield. And then if we somehow get to deal 6 to the Invasion, we can also transform it into the Apex of Ikoria. Doesn't come up a whole lot, although one way to get there is with our Tyvar stand, which can maybe pump up a Rot Priest so we can actually deal 6 damage. But for the most part, we'll just be using it as a tutor effect. And then finally, there's Archdruid's Charm, a recent addition. And this has 3 modes, but the one we're most interested in is to search our library for any creature or land card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So unlike Invasion of Ikoria, it doesn't go straight onto the battlefield, but it also has additional flexibility of maybe exiling an artifact or enchantment, or more relevant, put a plus up a swan counter on target creature we control, and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature we don't control. So not only can this be a removal spell, but it's also a way to target our own rot priest to apply those poison counters. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we do need some protection spells to keep Rot Priest alive, and if the opponent tries to take it out with a spot removal spell, we'll also apply more poison. As we cast a protection spell, we apply even more poison, so that's where things can escalate pretty quickly. And those spells include a Royal Treatment, giving it Hexproof until end of turn, and we also create a Royal Roll Token, giving it plus one plus one and Ward one. And then there's Time Your Safekeeping, giving Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. We also gain two life, so the upside here is that it can also maybe let a Rot Priest survive a Sweeper that destroys all creatures, whereas a Royal Treatment does not. And then a Tyvor Stand doesn't gain any life, but we can sink additional mana into it to grow our Rot Priest even more, and also give Hexproof and Indestructible. So these are the 12 one mana protection spells, since we can also cast Tyvor Stand for X equals zero. And then a Thirsting Roots is a nice one, can cast it early to get a basic forest if we're light on lands, but later in the game we can also cast it to just proliferate and deal one more poison. And it's also a green spell we can maybe pitch to our March of Burgeoning Life. So if we're mulliganing, it's often better to keep Thirsting Roots over a forest since we can always get a forest with it and then later in the game it has additional utility and then another important addition in my opinion is Glimpse the Core. This can search your library for a forest card and put it on the battlefield tapped. Now what that allows us to do is to ramp on turn 2 and then turn 3 cast something like Invasion of Ikoria and have a spare mana to still protect the Rot Priest once we get it on the battlefield so that can also make a world of difference. Also pretty nice alongside our Archroot's Charm which is pretty expensive to deploy otherwise so we can actually get the Rot Priest on the battlefield after searching it up. So the addition of Glimpse also quite nice. And then finally, Tandem Takedown. One thing this deck doesn't have, unlike the blue-green version with uh, Ivy, the Poison Ivy deck as it's called, is uh, that we don't have the Blue March, which can target multiple creatures at once. Tandem Takedown tries to fill that role a little bit, as we can target up to two creatures we control, each getting one extra power, and they each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature, Planeswalker or Battle. So if we have, let's say, two Rot Priests on the battlefield, cast Tandem Takedown, we can target both, which results in four total poison applied to the opponent with just one spell. So that's the power of takedown, even though Rod Priest is pretty small to begin with. 
and then a mana base, 20 basic forests, a Boseju in case we need to channel it, and then a Mirex can provide additional toxic creatures to maybe close out the game in a long drawn out control battle, and we can also search it up with our Archdruid's Charm, but because it only makes colorless mana after we play it, it's uh, not ideal to have too many copies of Mirex since we do need to cast lots of green spells early on, and of course triple green on Archdruid's Charm is also pretty difficult to cast if we needed to play Mirex earlier, so I'm only playing the one copy here. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, no Rod Priest. Do have an Invasion to get one, and then a bunch of Protection spells. Ideally we would have had a bit of Ramp as well, so we can play Invasion on 3 with an extra mana. But it's not bad enough to Mulligan. Just gotta hope we're not up against a hyper-aggressive deck that can punish our slower start. And then Thirsting Roots. I will need land 4, but I'll wait one more turn to find out if we draw land naturally or not. Otherwise keeping this could maybe help proliferate, or be an extra green spell we can pitch to the uh, March of Burgeoning Life. Opponent on red-white Convoke. Definitely one of the faster decks in the format. Drawing Rod Priest always helps. So now we can play it, keep up our protection spells. Not that I expect any removal. So with only one Rod Priest, it might be tricky to really get a lot going. So getting a second and then targeting our creatures is going to be a lot more effective. And looks like they can make Goblin Tokens as well here. So yeah, bones off to a very good start. At least a 1-2 can hold off all the 1-1s. One until they play Recruiter, I guess. Yeah, I'll wait on Royal Treatment, even though giving this plus one plus one could be helpful. And drawing another Rod Priest isn't bad. Although I might still go for Invasion here. Even though if they play a uh, Recruiter, being able to pump up the Rod Priest would be better. But let's get the Clunkier spell out of the way. And then it's going to be easier to keep up our interaction next turn. So do we see an Anthem effect? Warleader's Call would also be pretty effective here. Convoke Knight Errant, maybe? Yep. Okay. So at least no Recruiter this turn. But yeah, the power and toughness is adding up. Opponent can play Reinforcements, Activate Warden. And the damage from the pain line is not going to matter in this matchup. So we can play Rod Priest number 3. These are each 3 poison. This is 1, so we do need to find one more way to target our own creature. Plus Mirax also makes it harder to deploy all our spells at once. Opponent decides to hit for 2 instead. Alright, a land is not the worst. So I guess we'll just hang on to Tyvar Stand and Treatments. And then, yeah, if we're lucky, we could poison them next turn. If we're unlucky, our opponent goes a land, play creature, play recruiter. Then we can set up a good block on Knight Errant with Tyvar Stand. Treatment can ambush a 2-1, essentially. So we should be able to survive one attack. Opponent maybe taking to the skies with Warden instead. And another one. Okay. If the Knight Errant attacks on the ground, we could double block it. And then just tie our stand on the first Rod Priest they put in uh, their order so that it doesn't end up in any Rod Priest dying. Ooh, Bunnycorn, that's scary. So next turn we might be dead. So gonna try to make the most out of it. Opponent only attacking with Warden, actually. Okay. So do we think we can hang on to a Tyvar stand? Definitely gonna have to fire off Royal Treatments just to cast some of our spells. Now we can at least proliferate with the roots. 
BFI Tyvar stand now. We can top deck any of our protection spells to win next turn. If I save it, we essentially get a free block on the Bunnycorn. But then we're still taking a lot of damage, especially if they have a Recruiter or some other Anthem effect. So I think I just go for it now. And hope to get lucky. If not, we can still maybe chum block with the Rod Priest and try and top deck our way out of it on the following turn. Alright, March should do it. So X equals 2. Target Rod Priest. Get the last one. And then opponent maybe scooped prematurely here since this is only 3 poison. But then we did have the roots as well to proliferate, and that would have done it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we don't have Rot Priest, but we do have Invasion of Ikoria, plus Archdruid's Charm to get them. So we'll try it. Don't have our ramp spell on too, so won't be able to keep up a protection spell after getting the Rot Priest. Never mind, Glimpse the core right over the top. So now we can Invasion, get Rot Priest, and protect it. Which is a lot better, especially against the control deck. Although they might just counter the invasion here, we'll see. If we were worried about a counter spell, it would have been better to just pass and keep up Archer's Charm, get Rod Priest end of turn. But since we get to put it straight onto the battlefield, it is more tempting to invasion. Opponent's gonna deduce. And hope they don't have some sort of edict effect here. Path of Peril is fine, so we can safekeeping to make indestructible. Or do we want a Tyvar stand? Stand could be used to maybe transform the invasion. So yeah, let's safekeeping. Okay, so now definitely gonna hit the opponent here. And then I could end of turn Archroot's Charm to get another Rod Priest while keeping up our author interaction. Or I could main phase, just cast it. Question is what to do with the roots. Do I get a land or do I keep it to proliferate? So one extra poison could matter. An extra land probably doesn't matter too much, even though I can cast a bigger Tyvar stand. So yeah, I think I've decided on Charm main phase. Just to make sure it resolves, but then pass with a mana untapped. Putin might tap out for a shieldred. Nope, Putin keeps up their interaction. Well, as long as we can keep hitting them with a Rod Priest, I'm happy. So I guess we'll start there. And I'll play another one. That resolves. Yeah, let's hang on to both Thirsting Roots. Another Deduce is fine. Now they could have a Board Wipe at 5 to destroy our creatures. I don't think they'll be able to... I guess never mind, they could collect evidence to get rid of all the Rot Priests in my deck, but we can at least uh, protect one of them with the Tyvar Stand. And yeah, there it is, Deadly Cover-Up. Would have been the perfect answer. Can save one Rod Priest. And then I think I may as well cast a Real Treatment to get one extra poison out of it while we still control Rod Priest. So yeah, this is not going to save the Rod Priest, but... I guess I would have been even better off targeting the uh, Indestructible one just to get that extra plus one plus one. Not that it's really going to matter here. Alright, so no Rod Priest left in the deck, which does hurt us, but next turn we can just apply one more poison, up to eight, and then double proliferate will do it. So yeah, even beat a deadly cover-up. And opponent scoops it up since they saw the double thirsting roots in hand. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a march, but no way to get our initial Rod Priest. So we'll take Mulgan. This is better. And then... A land versus Thirsting Roots is the decision here. Close call. 
I guess I'll uh, keep the Thirsting Root since that can always get a land on turn two. Facing red aggro. Alright, so we gotta make a tough call here. Do we play Rot Priest or do we wait until we can protect it with our various hexproof tricks? Now opponent played turn one Kumano, so they're incentivized to play a threat. But uh, yeah, if they're afraid of the poison deck, I could easily see them cast a lightning strike instead of adding anything to the board. And then our game plan kind of falls apart. So let's just Roots get a, a land here. And then, yeah, Mono Red on the play is going to make it pretty tricky for us, since they can easily outrace our deck. We've got to hope we can leverage our pump spells to maybe take out some of their creatures. And hope they kind of waste their turn using removal while we can protect the Rot Priest as opposed to them adding more threats to the board. If they do tap out for, let's say, a Godric, we can at least block the etching of Kumano. But nope, opponent attacks first. So can't really afford to tap out now. Take five. And a second main Chandra. Yep, that's a good one. Adds a mana. Give a toast. <laughs> and no use for that mana. So we'll take our turn. I don't think I want to Archdruid's Charm just yet. Since if I wait another turn, we can maybe take out something bigger. If we also have the Royal Treatment on our creature. I could Invasion get a second Rod Priest, but then we're tapped out. So, another close call here. Opponent's next turn potentially presenting lethal, thanks to Chandra making more mana. And a card like Monstrous Rage could also punish us for blocking or double blocking. But yeah, the game state we want to get to is basically 4 mana, a protection spell and Archroot's Charm. So maybe I do just uh, get another Rot Priest while I can. And then Rot Priest may as well attack here. And hope they can't present lethal next turn. At least now burn spell will apply to poison. If they target my creature that is. Which at this point they're not really incentivized to anymore. Adversary 2-2 two, two haste. So they're attacking for uh, 8 here. Okay, so we fall to 1. Can we deal lethal? Well, takedown certainly helps. So I can get another Rot Priest in play and still cast a takedown afterwards. So best I can do is takedown, which applies four poison. Treatment is two more, so that's six, seven, eight, plus one is nine. So we're one short. Can I survive if I pass a turn? Well, we do have Time your safekeeping to maybe gain two, and we can take out some of their creatures with takedown. So I guess we just have to pass it back here, and hope they point a burn spell. I mean, at this point they're just going face. Chandra can also just kill us, so I would have to time your safekeeping beforehand. But I guess that still works. But yeah, it's a shame we have to give up the attack. But yeah, this is uh, four poison. Five, six, seven, eight, plus one is nine. So just one short. Alright, so we'll see if they just immediately activate Chandra. Then I'll have to probably cast a safekeeping. Or do we take down first? I guess I can take down first in case they have a response to it. So both of these. And then take out an adversary. That all works. And then safekeeping. And hope they don't have another burn spell. Which at this point would just uh, kill us. 
All right, we're at two. We can block adversary with our indestructible rod priest. Squee is uh, gonna do it here. So yeah, maybe if we actually cast our rod priest on turn one, things could have worked out better for us, since they didn't seem to have any burn spells in hand. Well, still ended up being pretty close. Could have put the opponent to nine poison total on the draw against Mono Red. And uh, yeah, there was a turn where we kind of wasted the mana in a way. So had I cast a real treatment, then we might have gotten there. But uh, yeah, always very narrow margins when facing Mono Red. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And uh, not the most exciting hand featuring Rot Priest, but a keepable one. With double invasion, we can get some more. We're just missing a protection spell here. All right, we drew Rod Priest number two. So we'll be able to get all four by the end of this. Opponents on an Esper deck and uh, discarding Unraveler with uh, Surveil, actually. So might be on a reanimation plan. Well, I can uh, hit for one, play another Rod Priest. And then the tandem takedown could be a lot more poison for us. Let's see what the stowaway can discard. Atraxa, so they are going big. Another surveil. And there's Kaito, they'll switch to nighttime. Okay, so we could now cast the Tandem Takedown if we'd like, or we can get another Rod Priest in play first. Hoping they don't have, like, a temporary lockdown would definitely hurt us here. So yeah, step one, let's attack. That works. Yeah, safekeeping doesn't save us from a lockdown. They could have some 4 mana board wipe, in which case safekeeping can still help. But uh, I expect the opponent's deck to be mostly discard outlets and then combo pieces to reanimate. So I think I might have another turn to get a Rod Priest in play. And then next turn with takedown and safekeeping we could get there. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a fail case here if they have a board wipe. Modern Age is fine. So next turn they're maybe setting up the uh, reenact the crime to get something back out of the graveyard for free. We see Beseech, so they're definitely on a combo build. And yeah, we should be able to get there. Tandem takedown. That's six poison. And then attack with safekeeping backup. So yeah, if we naturally draw Rod Priest, we can be faster than some of these reanimation combo decks. Although this seems like a reasonable matchup, since even if they get an Atraxa in play, we don't really care about the opponent gaining 7, so we have the tools to beat them. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Well, we can access 4 Rod Priests total. Uh, invasion puts one in play, and then Charm can maybe fight with it as well. It's very slow, but we're on the play, so does that make up for it? Maybe it does. Let's try it for science. And then hope to draw some protection spells. Thirsting Roots, I think I'm better off just getting a land for now. Since we're gonna need a lot of mana if we wanna leverage Archdruid's Charm. The first Rod Priest likely taken out here by removal spell. Or they might counter the invasion. Invasion can also get one back out of our graveyard, so if they answer one, it's better to get it back instead of searching our library, so we're more likely to draw it naturally. All right, invasion resolves. Worst case scenario, they have a Shieldred's Edict, make a sacrifice or a Rod Priest, but more realistically, cut down or go for the throat. All right, so we've got our first point of poison. We can now proliferate with the uh, Thirsting Roots. Okay, March is nice. So now we can get a Rod Priest. And then March Pitching Roots 
lets us get another one. Although we may not get a chance to do it here. Alright, our opponent is not gonna mess around here, just counters our invasion. And now Shieldred, so at least our opponent stepped out for a turn. But Shieldred does apply a lot of pressure. So let's Invasion again. Get Rot Priest back out of the graveyard. And then I think I gotta keep up Tyvar stand here. Hope they tap out again so we can march. Pitching roots. So we'll take four. And I go for the throat so we can tie our stand in response. And I make disappear. All right, so that's to make disappear to go for the throat. A lot of interaction. So that's going to make it a lot harder for us. So now we can charm and get the Rot Priests, but can I afford to play it? Next turn we're taking another 6, so we're essentially on a 2 turn clock. So if we're being realistic, I don't think we have time to not play the Rot Priest here, even though I would prefer to keep up protection. Otherwise I'm just gonna have to chump with it next turn. Now we could also Roots get a Forest. Do you have an extra mana, basically? Does that matter? Assuming Rod Priest survives, next turn we can march for x equals 2. Get another one. Treatment. Yeah, I think we just play it and pass. And hope they're out of removal. Does not look like it. <laughs> Go for the third number 3. Alright, well... And a deep cavern bat to have a look. So had we kept Rot Priest in hand, they would have been able to snipe it. So now they should take the march, most likely. So even if we top deck a Rot Priest, we can get a second one. And then Shieldred kills us in two turns, plus they also have a Restless Reef. So, yeah, I don't think we're surviving this. But yeah, they needed a lot of interaction here. And our hand of triple invasion almost worked out. Opponent does take the march. Draw another one, but it's not gonna help. So yeah, that should do it. We can proliferate. Put them to five poison, but that's far from lethal. Alright, GG's. And a spyglass siren. So this likely a blue black and a mid-range E deck with uh, Gix to draw additional cards with the Flyers as well. And then, yeah, they drew a lot of the interaction. Deep Cavern Band admittedly also very good against us, since we don't have a way to remove it. So this was always going to be a tough matchup. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, no Rot Priest or Tutor in sight, so we will have to Mulgan. Alright, this is much better. We've got a Rot Priest, March to get a second one, Treatment for Protection. So it's either Land or Takedown that has to go. And uh, yeah, getting rid of the Land is maybe a little bit greedy, but by keeping the extra green spell we also have something we can pitch to the March. So in a way it's kind of like a mana source. So we'll try this. And then, yeah, I think the upside's high enough to just play Rod Priest on one, even though there are some one mana answers out there. Frontliner's not one of them. Okay, so, can attack. And then if our opponent's on a white aggro or Boros Convoke deck, don't expect any real removal, but may as well just pass and wait on March. So this one enters tapped, I believe. So no ambushing the frontliner. Opponent probably sitting on a reinforcements. 
think I'm okay just marching, pitching the royal treatments, even though it can give plus one plus one, uh, just so we can keep the takedown, which will hopefully do a bit more work for us. If our opponent tries to double block a rock priest, we can take out one of their one ones and apply a bunch of poison all at the same time. Okay, thirsting roots can proliferate. And there's a reinforcement, so I'm hoping they double block here. Perfect. So that's four poison, plus one from the rot priest hitting them. So up to seven, and we still have both creatures in play. Now if our opponent can make enough blockers, it may be tricky to get those last points in until we find one of our protection spells to target our Rot Priest, basically. And Archdruid's Charm should pretty much do it. They might have another reinforcements up, um, but it doesn't really matter since we can do two more poison here. And then next turn, Thirsting Roots can proliferate the last one. So these can attack. They do have another reinforcements, so they can jump and double block. So yeah, the Boros Convoke deck. Struggling to keep up. They didn't have their best draw necessarily, but it was certainly a functional one with lots of early plays. But forcing them to block also means they have a harder time convoking their spells. So we can attack, make them chump. They have reinforcements number three. I was just kind of curious here to find out. But uh, Thirsting Roots will do it. All right, sweet. Now to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Rot Priest and a March, so very promising start. Do we play Rot Priest on one? Play with Fire Cut Down are kind of the common one mana answers. I think it's worth it to just go for it now, as next turn I'll maybe get to connect, apply Poison and cast a march. Um, so we'll start by attacking. And then I could march right now, pitching Invasion of Akaria to keep Royal Treatments. And then we've got Double Rot Priest, plus we can protect one. Yeah, I think that's okay, before they can keep up a counter spell. Collector's Vault, so they're more of a reanimation deck. Untap for now, safekeeping is two more poison, so we're getting close. Safekeeping also helps in case they have a Path of Peril to destroy my Rot Priests. Kaito is acceptable. They're gonna draw and discard. So next turn they could potentially combo off with... Uh, Reenact the crime. So yeah, opponent should just be dead now. As we can fire off both pump spells. Two poison each, plus an attack for two more. That'll do it. So maybe had they made a ninja token, they could have survived. But uh, you never know what we could have top decked here. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our mono green Rod Priest deck in action, and while of course it always helps to naturally draw the Rod Priest, at least we've uh, been able to showcase that you can still get there by tutoring it up, even if it costs you a bit more mana to do so. 
And uh, yeah, if you're maybe bored of the other poison variants like green white or banned poison, maybe give mono green a try. Should also be a bit easier on the wild cards, especially if you already own some of those tutor effects. But uh, yeah, doesn't mean that the deck is unbeatable, of course. Some very fast starts from Boros Convoke or Mono Red Aggro, as we've seen, can uh, apply enough pressure that we can't apply those last points of poison. There's uh, some control decks, especially if they come prepared with cards like Temporary Lockdown, which exiles the Rod Priest, and we can't even protect it by giving Hexproof and Indestructible. That's another pretty difficult card for us to beat, since it comes down so early as opposed to Sunfall at 5 mana. So there's certainly answers out there, but uh, overall not a bad strategy if you're a fan of Poison. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.